So what connects ancient sites like Stonehenge, the Pyramids of Egypt, Machu Picchu and ancient burial mounds across the globe? If you said ley lines and earth energy, then you'd be right. So hi everybody, I'm Dawn Kirkham and in this video we're going to dive into the history and lore of ley lines and earth energies. So this topic was requested by Sam, so thank you Sam for your ideas on the content that you want to see most. So I've been dousing energy for over two decades and I still just know a fraction of the true nature of earth energy. I've learned, I've learned from a variety of people, some of who learn from the best earth energy dousers in the world. So people like Hamish Miller, Dennis Wheatley and his daughter Maria Wheatley. The list goes on and I'll provide some links to resources to those people in the description below if you want to find out a bit more about them. So earth energy is complex and this video is a brief overview. I'll share with you some of the history, the lore and techniques to identify some of these earth energies and how to use them for your own benefit. So this video isn't a dousing course or an earth energy course. It really is just a gentle introduction to the world of earth energy. Now I will add some links below to some courses and resources that I think you'll find useful if you want to do kind of a deeper dive and further your knowledge and skills. And there will be more videos coming as well. So earth energy being present in the landscape isn't new, it's millennia old and wisdom cultures all over the world recognise that it's present. China calls them dragon lines, South American shamans call them spirit lines, Irish people call them fairy lines and Australian indigenous people call them dream lines. Now according to the late Hamish Miller, who was one of the UK's leading earth energy dousers, Earth energy is the Earth's nervous system. He tells us that humans have a bio biomagnetic field that we call the aura, and that surrounds us. But the Earth has a geomagnetic field, which interacts with our auric field. So it's made up of lines, curves and grids, and this system of Earth energy is dynamic and it has a profound effect on our physical, our emotional, our mental and our spiritual well-being. Where the lines cross, they're powerful energy centres that show up in the natural landscape. And some believe they're the places where our ancestors built their ritual sites. Now, have you ever been to a place that without any clear explanation or reason why, you just felt different? And it made you feel maybe more at ease and connected? Maybe, maybe not. I bet you have. These places can be found all over the globe. Places like Stonehenge, Sedona, Glastonbury and Mount Shasta are among some of the most powerful locations on the planet. They're renowned for their special energy and how they make you feel when you're there. But you don't have to travel to faraway places to experience this. Chances are you can find spots in your own local landscape that make you feel good when, the, that, when you're there. Chances are you've already found them. These are places that you find peace. It allows you to breathe fully and deeply. And even in the urban landscape, you can find these places as well. So welcome to the world of earth energy. Now, I think most people have heard and even use the terminology of ley lines. But where did this come from? So the thinking that ancient sacred sites were built in alignment with one another, it was first proposed in 1846 by the Reverend Edward Duke. Now he'd observed that some prehistoric monuments and medieval churches aligned with each other on a map. Then in the 1920s, Alfred Watkins, who was an English landscape photographer working in Herefordshire, also observed that ancient sites seemed to, to be aligned with, with others nearby. So his idea was that our ancestors built and used prominent features in the landscape. So almost like navigation points. 
Now Watkins attributed neither mystical nor electrical properties to these alignments. Rather, he felt certain that they were the visible remains of ancient prehistoric systems of tracks or trading routes. He used the term ley lines to describe them. Now Watkins' ideas about these ancient trackways had a following. So there were ley line clubs set up all over England and people would go out into the countryside on a Sunday with a map, a pencil and a ruler to find them. If you're interested in this, you can read more about Watkins's work in his book, Old Straight Track, which is still in print today, and I'll link it below in the description. So if Watkins didn't introduce the notion that ley lines were more than just well-trodden trackways between prehistoric points, who did? So as mentioned earlier, this concept is millennia old and long forgotten by many. However, during the 1960s, Watkins' ideas were used by British proponents of the Earth Mysteries movement. The Earth Mysteries movement can be traced back to two 17th century antiquarians, John Aubrey and William Stukeley. They believed that Stonehenge was associated with the Druids and that ancient cultures were highly aware of subtle energy lines and knowledge that utilised this natural source of earth energy to supercharge their sacred structures. Now the Earth Mysteries movement were awakening the consciousness of the planet and helping us to, to almost remember what we'd long forgotten about these mystical earth energies. Now whether you believe that these energy lines are the super highway for alien visitors, as some do, or they do in fact move so subtle energy around the planet or not. The belief in a web of in invisible energy throughout the earth is a feature of many wisdom cultures across the world. Our understanding of this system of energy has been greatly enhanced by pioneer dowsers, some I mentioned earlier. And as a consequence, there is a growing body of knowledge and expertise in this area. But despite this, the opinion as to whether or not Earth energy really does exist is divided. But is it too much of a stretch to believe that the Earth has a similar collection of energy centers, meridians and acupoints, just like the human body? Just because science can't identify them, does this mean that they don't exist? The system of Earth energy is known as the geodetic system. And this was a term coined by um, Guy Underwood as he identified the many different aspects of earth energy that exists. His work today remains a must read for the serious earth energy dowser. And again, I'll link it below. Now my first introduction to earth energy was through what are called ley lines. So I was sitting in a closed circle of a small group of mediums and we would consult on paranormal cases. And this is how I got interested and involved in the, the whole world of paranormal, which I continue today. And this was when I was just starting my journey as a medium over two decades ago. The possibility that ley lines ran through a haunted location and were being used to generate energy for a spirit to manifest or even move around was very intriguing. I was taught how to use dousing rods to detect them, to help me to make sense of a uh, haunting uh, that we were investigated. We also use dousing rods in our spirit rescue work. Now there are accounts of Native American, Chinese, South American, Irish and Korean traditional beliefs that all share the common core that spirits can only travel in a straight line. So prevailing was this thinking in those cultures that some of them paid special attention to making winding pathways out of graveyards and to create curves in common roads to keep spirits from following people home. So in my experience, I found no evidence to back up this kind of linear travel pattern for spirits. For me, they seem to move in a non-linear fashion. However, I am still intrigued by the possibility that Earth energy um, is part of a location's haunting story. 
and there's compelling evidence to suggest that spirits can utilize this energy, be affected by it, and the location itself being Im impacted by the presence of this, this energy in the landscape. Another possibility is underground water. Now, hauntings are also said to occur at locations where underground veins of water or covered wells and rock strata are found. And I'm going to be touching on the phenomena of underground water later in the video. So this is what all got me interested in earth energy in the, the first place, and I'm still exploring it. I do hold a belief that earth energies do play a part in the haunted nature of a location. Perhaps energy lays hold the memories of the people that lived and died there. Perhaps energy lays play a part in residual hauntings of a landscape. Maybe this is why we still hear guns and cannon fire, the cries of wounded soldiers, etc. in places like Gettysburg. It's a fascinating topic and this initial interest and in work led me to find out more about subtle energy and dowsing and I use this still today in my work as an energy healer, a teacher, an earth energy dowser, a paranormal researcher and a medium. Now I think that most people have heard of the term ley lines, but what are they? So ley lines can be seen as the energetic veins of the planet. They radiate subtle energy and they're said to be able to take information or energy from these kind of higher vibrational points and carry them around the world, spreading knowledge and wisdom to, to all, all inhabitants all that cross the path. Now where these lines intersect, they create powerful meeting points where our ancient ancestors built their structures with clear knowledge that they were leveraging this energy. The power places that I mentioned earlier are all said to have several converging and crossing um, energy lines. Now, typically in the dowsing community, the terminology ley line isn't used to describe these earth energy lines. In the Sacred Space Handbook, author Sig Longrun from the American Dowsing Association, he talks about the terminology that is used and the differences in thinking about what these various terms mean. So he suggests that these differences produce inconsistencies with what dowsers find in the same sites. And I have to agree with him. So he offers some clear and consistent terminology that's used by dowsers universally. And it's really helpful to share some of that in this video so that we all know what we're talking about. So let's get clear about the term ley line. Most people use this term for these energetic bands that run through and within the earth. But this isn't really the, the correct use of the name. The term ley lines are universally considered to be the visual line that connects three or more ancient sites to another. And this relates to the work of Watkins that I spoke about earlier. So these lines are topographical and they're not thought to produce any energy at all. They can be found in the landscape visually or with an ordinance, ordinance survey map a ruler and a pencil. Sig Longrun calls these T-lines. Now, dosers tend to use the terminology energy lay to describe the earth energy lines. So this differentiates them from the topographic, topographical ley line that Watkins described. So the term energy lay or e-lay is used for these natural earth energy lines. So I'll be using the term energy lay. So energy lays have common features that can be identified through dowsing. They're typically six to eight feet wide, although they can be wider. They're straight and they're yang in energy. So yang energy is associated with the masculine and yin with feminine. It is possible to locate these energy, um, energy lays, uh, measure them, find their frequency, their direction and their strength all by dowsing. An interesting characteristic about energy lays that Sieg Longrun shared in his book is that the width of an energy lay can vary according to the time of day, the time of year, and even the moon phases. And this suggests that the energy within the earth is influenced by electromagnetic forces. 
So to date, there are no scientific instruments that can detect energy lays. And it's this fact that's used by those who wish to debunk the idea that they exist at all. And yet the effect of these power places can be seen in the interactions that they have with human health and consciousness. If you've ever been lucky enough to visit one of these places, the impact is undeniable. Even those who do not claim to be able to perceive subtle energy feel something. They report strong feelings in such places as Stonehenge, Machu Picchu and Sedona. And here's a short demonstration on how to locate an energy lay using dousing rods. And I'll start by giving you a little lesson in the techniques that you'll need to douse an energy lay should you want to do this for yourself. So the technique of dousing is thousands of years old. And images of what looks like people dousing have appeared in cave paintings all over the world. Now there are many theories as to how dousing actually works and many that don't even believe it. So my understanding of dousing is that um, in us, in all of us, we have access to the collective wisdom of the universe and most of us spend our days at the level of our conscious mind and we cut ourselves off from the ability to access this knowledge. So techniques like dousing help us to tap into our superconscious, where all of the knowledge and the wisdom of the universe is. And so the tools that we use in dousing, like a pendulum or an L rod like these, are just a tool to help us to tap in. So through minute muscle movements, I guided from our um, subconscious, the rod um, or the pendulum answer our questions. So I do have a video on pendulum dousing and I'll link that below. Uh, but for now, here's a few techniques that I want to share with you um, with uh, rods um, because this is going to be really helpful for dousing earth, and, um, earth energies. So first let's talk about L rods. So they're called L rods because obviously uh, the shape is a, a, an L shape. It was originally done with Y-shaped branches of willow and they were used for water divination. The practice has evolved into these rods, but some still use the traditional Y-shaped branches, particularly for locating water. So rods, when you get rods, they come in a pair, but I really only work with one. And they're made of various metals like copper and brass. I've even heard of um, some rods being made out of silver or gold, but that's beyond my uh, pay, pay grade. These are copper, these ones, and you'll notice that there's a sleeve on them and the, the, these sleeves are on aluminium, but they could be copper also. And the sleeve helps the rods to swing freely and not to be interfered with by your grip. However, there are some dowsers who prefer them without the sleeves at all and it is just a preference. Now you don't have to go out and buy expensive sets of rods when you're starting out. You can actually make them from coat hangers and have um, uh, straws for the sleeves. Um, however, you'll probably find these a little bit, bit light for earth energy dousing uh, because the lighter the rods are, the more that they can get blown by, by the wind if you're in the field. So you'll probably want to make a purchase um, of a heavier set at some point. But while you're practicing, coat hanger rods are great. So let's look at holding your rod. So I'll show, I'll show you holding them both. But as I say, I only really work with one, uh, with one rod now. And you'll see that later in the video where I douse for earth energies. So you want to hold them in your hands, but not so tight that, you know, you want to be relaxed. Hold them kind of shoulder width of part, width, width apart, and just start by swinging them so you can feel how they move in your hands. So the first thing that you're going to want to be able to do is to find a yes and a no. So you're going to hold your, your, your rods and you're going to say, show me a yes. So they're crossing. And then you're going to say, show me a no. So they're moving outwards. And so now you've got your yes and your no, and that's one of the first uh, techniques that you'll need when you're dousing earth energy. So it is something that you'll want to practice. 
So the next technique is your found response. You're going to want to be able to understand what the rods are telling you when they've found, when they've located what it is that you're asking for. So you can say, show me a found response. And so you'll probably find it's, it's the same as your yes response. So found for me was crossing and so that's the same as yes. So now I have a way that I can ask my rods questions. So I've got my yes and my no, but I've also got a way in which the rods can tell me when they found what it is that I'm looking for. So the last technique that I'm going to show you in this video is something called directional dousing. And this allows us to track and locate something. It's really, really a cool technique and it's simple. And we just use the phrase, show me where the such and such is. So let me show that to you now. So I've got my rods and I'm going to say, show me where the lake is. There we go. And the rods are pointing towards the lake. I might say, show me where the house is. And so the rods are pointing towards the house, which is just over there. I might say, and well, let's see what's behind me. Oh, we've got a picnic bench there at the back. So I might say, show me where the picnic bench is. And it's, they're, they're pointing backwards to the bench. So um, a really good technique to use because you will be um, tracking some earth energy, um, earth energy lines like energy lays and some, some other things. So a good technique to practice as well. So just a little introduction into the use of rods and you will see how I use these as we're tracking some, um, some earth energy lines as well, which will be coming up, um, coming up soon in the video. So, I'm here at the amazing Hartley Castle. I'm in the grounds of Hartley Castle. You'll probably be able to see that in the background. And what I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going to be dousing for an energy lay. So if you remember a little earlier, we talked about energy lays and these are the, the veins that run throughout the earth. I know that there's an energy lay here. I'm going to look, first of all, locate the nearest one. And then I'm going to pick up each of the two edges. So the first edge and then the outer edge. And that will help me to determine roughly how wide it is. I can also determine the direction of the lay as well as the, um, you know, the, the flow, um, you know, how, how high the energy of that particular lay is as well. So we're going to do that now. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be um, finding my my uh, my yes and my no, making sure that they're correct. So show me a yes, show me a no, and um, what's the um, found response? And as I said earlier, it usually is the yes response. And so I've got my yes and my no and my found. I'm also going to just check in on whether I should be dousing for this, whether I can douse for this, and, and seeking some permission as well. And this comes from uh, Sieg Longrun's uh, work on spiritual dousing. So, um, can I douse this earth, earth energy lay? Yes. Should I be dousing this earth energy lay? Yes. And may I be dousing this earth energy lay? So that just means, am I able to douse? Am I in the right energetic space to be able to douse? Do I have the skills to douse this? It also is about whether this is something I should be doing and tapping into, and then just the permission to douse. So we have that now, so we're going to go. So what you're going to see as we, as we move forwards is the rod is searching. So it's in this, in this search mode. So it's going backwards and forwards from side to side, so it's searching. I've asked the question um, to find me the edge of the um, nearest energy lay. I know it's this way. We've got the direction. And so we're just slowly working through. The more that you douse, the more that you pick up energetics in your body as well. And you'll start to feel the energy shift as well as you're getting close to it. And that's definitely what I can feel happening here. All the uh, all the hair on my head is standing up, which is uh, usually a good sign. There's energy around. And so here we go. We're at the edge of the lay. So I'm going to put 
a dousing rod in so that we know where that that is. So now I want to find the other edge of the energy lay. So we're going to do that now. So show me the edge of this energy lay. We've got lovely Canadian geese helping us. So there we go. We've found the edge of the um, energy lay there. So I'm just going to paste that out now and just see how wide this energy lay is. And you can see our wonderful shadows as well in the, in the film, which looks really good. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's about seven, seven feet uh, width, which is a reasonable sized uh, energy lay. So now I'm going to find where the midpoint is of that. So again, I'm going to ask my rod to find me in the middle of this energy lay. And there we go. We're about the, the midpoint in here. So I can ask the rod, show me the direction that this energy lay is flowing. And as you can see, I'm going to follow this around. So the energy is actually flowing this way, the direction moving, moving up. So um, it's an energy lay of about um, seven feet wide and the directions come in right through the, uh, the property there. So that's how to douse um, an energy lay. Now earth energy as it is, is far more complex than just energy lays that inter interlace themselves throughout the planet. Earth energy extends out into the cosmos. It literally is a web of energy currents that run through and above the earth. Global geomagnetic grids, of which there are several, are thought to arise from the Earth's magnetic field as a form of vertical or sometimes horizontal radiation. They follow laws of symmetry and direction. Then there are water lines, blind springs, spirals, power centers and more. Like I said earlier, I'm not going to go into all of this in, in detail, but I'm going to highlight a few that I think are important. So let's talk about water lines. These are yin in energy, and they're also known as primary water. Primary water is, in, is inside the earth. It's different from secondary water, and that's formed in the atmosphere as rain and snow, and it kind of falls to the earth, filling up our aquifers. Water lines are typically three foot wide and are not straight. They snake through the earth. Where there's a fault, they can bubble up to the surface and they produce a spring. And this is healing water and it can be attributed to things like, you know, miracle springs like Lord's. In earth energy dousing, we can locate these fault lines. Even if the spring hasn't broken the surface, we can identify them. Known in the UK as blind springs and in North America as water domes, They've got distinct features which can be doused for. So blind springs are a vertical shaft of ascending water that doesn't rise to the surface of the earth, but it disperses through several horizontal fissures, which can be at various depths in the, in the ground. Dousers identify blind springs as several underground streams radiating from a central point. Blind springs are found under many ancient sites and um, many ancient churches as well, but they can also be found elsewhere throughout the countryside. A feature that's associated with blind springs is something called a geospiral. Again, these have distinct features that can be doused for. Now, I'm not going to be going in, into these for this video. I think it's a future video, but if you are interested in knowing more about these, I'm going to list some courses and resources below that you can check out. Now I do want to talk about power points as these can be found all over the place and are extremely powerful and beneficial. You'll have at least one power point in your home and others scattered around in the landscape. So within the earth, something called geodetic energy snakes around it. These are powerful and they sometimes come close to the surface. Unlike energy lays, they're not straight, they weave around and where they come close to the surface, they're called power points, or sometimes they're called earth springs. 
Now these are incredibly healing, so it's a good idea to locate your power points. And we can locate those using some dousing rods. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. So now we're going to find a power point. So um, I talked uh, before about just how beneficial that these are to find. You'll have at least one of those in your homes and they'll be dotted about in the landscape as well. So I know that there's at least one power, power centre here. And we're going to locate it and then we're going to just check how many radials they are. So let's get going. We need to, of course, um, check that I'm okay to find this. So um, may I find this PowerPoint? Can I find this PowerPoint? Should I find, the, find this PowerPoint? Yes. So we are good to go. So that's what we're going to do now. So show me the direction of the nearest PowerPoint. So here we go. So we're going to be, just again, the rod's going to be tracking. It's going to be taking us to the direction of the PowerPoint. So all, all your job is at this point is to stay focused on what you're tracking and follow where the rod shows you. Again, I can feel it. Here we go. So we're starting. We've got a yes a found response we've also got the energy being picked up here as well so we're going to count the radials and to do that i'm going to walk in a circle so we're going to start here so um, i'm asking the rods to count the radials one two So we've got nine radials and so this is a, a place of power and it's really beneficial to just even stand and hang out on it. So we're going to be coming back to that PowerPoint in a moment and I'll show you a little experiment which I hope you find as interesting as I do. So for me, one of the most intriguing things about understanding Earth energy is how our consciousness affects it. Now this can be positive or negative and might be the key to locations that feel kind of creepy, negative, maybe residual haunts and trapped spirits. A number of years back, my interest was piqued by a video demonstration that I saw Hamish Miller perform. Using dowsing, he located the strongest energy center or power point in the space that he was in. So he explained that these energy centers are all over the earth and they have radials that emanate out of them. As I previously mentioned, these power centers are sources of high energy. But what I didn't say was that they can be affected by our own consciousness. So Hamish firstly identified the strongest power center in the room. Then he identified how many radials they had. I think there were about nine or so. A little while later after his presentation, he asked the audience to connect with the PowerPoint that he'd identified. He told people that they could simply just say hi or maybe have a conversation with their head, with words or energetics from their heart. And after a short time, literally you know, 20 seconds or more, he checked how many radials there were and they'd almost doubled. That simple act of focusing on the PowerPoint had positively affected it. It had grown and it was like the minds of those presents in the room had activated the PowerPoint by simply, no simply noticing it. And here's a demonstration of me affecting the PowerPoint that I found earlier. I hope you find interesting. But now I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment. So I said earlier about how our unconscious mind affects the energy in the landscape. So I'm just going to spend um, uh, 20 seconds or so just really kind of tuning in. I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to work from my heart space and I'm going to just be channeling some energy into this beautiful space. I'm going to say hi to it. going to send it some love. I'm going to tell it that I see it, that I know it's here. So 
So now we're going to check just how many radials that short time has uh, taken on focusing it. So if you remember, we had nine radials before. So starting at this point, <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So just in that short, it wasn't even 20 seconds, it may have been 10 seconds of just channeling some love, telling this spot that I've seen it, the radials have um, increased from 9 to 12. So that's significant. And I think it's significant for us to know that our unconscious mind can affect the landscape and what are we putting out and how are we contributing to any of the energy that's just not beneficial to have in the world. Now, I think the implications are huge. How are we influencing the earth? If our collective mind is focused on negative thinking, this will have a direct impact on the earth energy itself. So are we weakening the earth by our constant focus on how weak she is? Maybe we can create a new narrative of a strong, vibrant, healthy and happy Gaia. Along with anything we can do directly to make an impact like recycling, reducing our carbon footprint, etc. We can spend a couple of minutes every day focusing on happy, healthy, whole. And we can also influence the energy in our homes. Negative thoughts and emotions will get imprinted onto the, the energy of the space that we live and work in. So remember, happy, healthy, whole can be applied to our homes, our place of work, and of course, our own state of being. So why is all of this important to understand? Well, because our bodies react to this energy, it's something that we need to be more aware of, as not all earth energy is good for us. So we use the term beneficial energy or non-beneficial energy. Or another term we could use is detrimental energy. The point is that we don't use positive and negative, as this is subjective and misinterpreted. So beneficial energy is a type of energy that is doused as being of benefit and non-beneficial can be detrimental to health. But this is over time. One thing to be aware of is that beneficial or detrimental energy doesn't mean necessarily beneficial or detrimental to everybody. Certain energies might be beneficial to a particular species or even a person. It can also be further subdivided to determine what is being most affected. So is it physical, is it emotional, mental or spiritual energy? All of this can be determined by dousing or muscle testing. Now Hamish Miller suggests that we react to a frequency that's not comfortable for us. And the impact of this kind of uncomfortableness um, is that our, our body gets depleted, our energy is depleted as we try to kind of compensate. And over time, due to this energy depletion, we get tired and then we get sick. And the term that we use is geopathic stress. And there are many things that can create geopathic stress in the landscape. The natural frequency of the Earth's magnetic field can be disrupted or distorted by things like underground water streams, geological fault lines, underground caverns, certain mineral deposits, as well as some man-made structures, things like railways, um, motorway cuttings, embankments, bridges, quarries, tunnels and mines. It can also be affected by electrical equipment and Wi-Fi. All these things and more have the potential to cause geopathic stress um, in the environment and in turn have the potential to be detrimentally affecting us. So perhaps the energy is too intense for you and your particular vibration. Maybe that's causing your disrupted sleep pattern. Maybe it's diminishing your aura. Each of these things can have an impact, um, each of these things can have an impact on us. Now animals are more in tune with these earth energies. 
and they'll naturally gravitate to the places to lie down that are good for them. It's well known that beekeepers try to place their hives on energy crossing points so that they get increased honey yields. Cows will lie down in a particular place in the field and dogs will do the same. Now it's said to be very wary of cats though. They apparently enjoy the rather noxious energies and so they'll sleep directly on an energy that may not be as good for you as it is for them. Now, in my next video, I'm going to introduce you to a fellow professional dowser and my good friend, Laurie Prophet. Like me, she trained with Maria Wheatley, second generation uh, master dowser from the UK. Laurie's gone on to do um, further studies with Maria and is well on her way to becoming a master dowser. Um, I actually got involved in dowsing at a Don Kirkham maritime museum in the old courthouse ghost hunt it was about 10 years ago i think and you lent us dowsing rods and pendulums for spirit communication and i was very intrigued by that yes so um i took a course uh, Maria Wheatley, second generation master dowser, came from the UK and she taught about a dozen of us dowsing, introductory dowsing and professional dowsing course and I found it was, it just seemed to be my calling. I found that having that communication with the earth and the unseen world around us was something that I had a real affinity for. And I continued on and did second level course with Maria. And right now I'm on the third level of dowsing course um, to be a master dowser at some point in the near future. So I um, teach with Don Kirkham. Uh, we teach a full day introductory basic dowsing course. Uh, we cover water energy, earth energy, um, in a small amount, and dowsing for our health. And I also teach um, Maria Wheatley's Esoteric College dowsing course for professional level dowsing. I am the only Canadian tutor teaching her course and certified to teach it. I also teach uh, small uh, classes of harmonizing your home with high frequency color dowsing. I know this is going to sound very funny, but the dowsing I do every day mostly is um, informational dowsing. It's something I do on such a automatic uh, basis. I have milk in the fridge and I'll uh, say, is this milk still good to drink? Yes or no? <laughs> And sometimes it's okay and I drink that and if not then I check it. But um, I think the one um, area of dousing that is the most um, pleasurable to me is dousing earth energy. It gives us such um, a really clear picture of the earth as a living being and to have that interaction is um, very fulfilling. But one area that um, many people go to and they probably aren't even aware of is Mount Douglas. It's uh, called Pakals in the Songhees and Esquimalt uh, Lekwungen language because their ancestors, when their families um, married into other tribes, Saanich and other tribes up island, they would meet at Pakals and that was a neutral area for uh, reunion, family reunions. But what's very interesting about uh, the summit of uh, Pakals is there is a yellow earth energy ley line that runs through there and um, I like to go up there on the summer solstice and uh, just soak up that energy. All earth energy is uh, has a dominant color to it 
and that's something you will discover if you further yourself in dowsing and um, yeah so I think Mount Douglas uh, people go up there they just think it's a wonderful site it is a wonderful site but there is a very strong ley line that runs through there the first thing I would say would be ask for permission uh, you always want to start your dousing with uh, show me yes, show me no, am I in balance? Then you want to state what your intention is. My intention is to go up to Mount Douglas and interact with the ley line that's there. May I do that at this time? The answer is yes, so then I would proceed and do that. Sometimes you will get a no and so you'll just uh, go somewhere else or go up another time. So my advice would be always ask permission. Um, don't cross private property. Be very respectful of the area that you're in. Um, if you can, after you have been interacting with Earth energy, um, electromagnetic frequencies are very harmful to the human being. Um, it can cause irritability, um, sleep uh, issues, it can cause headaches. And years ago they came in with smart meters and people were wondering how they could shield themselves from that. And now uh, with 5G coming in, the problem with 5G radiation or radi radio frequency radi uh, radiation is that the transmitters are on short waves and they have to be closer together um, than the regular cell towers. So it's, I don't know how many feet it is, but it's uh, very like every other house is going to have a transmitter and the thing is that you can't turn it off uh, what i do with my um, modem i have a smart tv a smartphone a wi-fi printer a wi-fi laptop but what i do at night is i turn the modem off i've put the modem on a separate um, power bar and then I just uh, I just turn that off at night if um, if that bothers me. So the thing with 5G radiation is you really can't get away from it. Um, people will tuck their their phone into their bra. I know, actually know somebody who does that. Um, but uh, 5G radiation um, scientists have said that it can cause cancer. Um, it, it can cause sleep problems, headaches, irritability, as I said before. So um, even though the Internet of Things is uh, really step forward in technology, it does come with a price. Now, if you think you might have detrimental energy in your home or your workplace, you can call on a professional dancer like Laurie to help you to identify what might be going on. And, and eliminate it. And I'll share below Laurie's contact details in the description, but also I'll uh, put some um, dowsing organizations as well um, if you're not local. So what we're gonna do now is just show you how our bodies interact so um, significantly to the earth energy and the environment. So I'm gonna douse um, Laurie's aura now, and uh, we're gonna see how that that is she said she's had chocolate and was it hot chocolate hot chocolate hot and chocolate chocolate timbits so it might be big but then we're going to get her to stand on the um the the power center that we uh we doused for earlier and just see if that has made a difference to the size of her aura so walk this way with me So what do you reckon that's about three feet. three feet? Perfect. Right then. So let's cut over to the power center. Okay. 
So now Laurie is on the power centre. She has um, also identified that herself through dowsing and she's standing on that now. I'm just going to ask her to suck that energy, the beautiful healing energy up through the soles of her feet and into her auric field. And the plan is just from a short amount of time standing on this power, power spot, we're going to see how that's impacted her aura. So again, walk this way. So that looks like that's about five feet. Yeah, about that. So literally seconds, seconds just standing on that spot, and we've managed to strengthen our aura. We've even, even without Timbits, we've managed to <laughs> strengthen her aura, and it's pushed out for uh, five feet. So I think that's really, really important for us to think about what are the implications to that. Well, if we're on um, uh, energies that are not beneficial to us, it's going to impact our auric field, it's going to impact our health. But if we can find spots in the landscape where, where it's healthy and it's high energy and it's vibrant, that's going to help us to heal and keep us healthy as well. So um, Laurie and I are available, should you wish to um, identify your power spots in your house and in your landscape so that you've got a way in which you can leverage this wonderful earth energy. As I mentioned at the start of the video, this was a brief introduction and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it stirred up more questions than I answered and maybe fired you up to learn more. My journey with earth energy and dowsing continues and I learn something new every day. I believe that we can have an amazing opportunity to understand the energetic nature of the earth um, through dowsing. And as a result, we can use this knowledge to help ourselves, our families, our friends and the community as a whole heal. Dowsing Earth Energy gets us out, it gets us interacting with the landscape, interacting with the trees, the rocks, the animals, plants and bodies of water. We get to have a profound connection to the earth and develop a relationship with it. Now in the next video I'm going to explore spirit of place, what it is and how to connect with it. So please do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to, be, to get notified when I upload a new one. So ta-ta for now.